so all the stuff that I've ever done and created in this world, like if tomorrow I'm no longer here, there's still a blueprint and a map of who I am and all the things that I've done that say that, yes, that will carry on and somebody might watch it one day and it'll be the right time and right. That's why I said, this is why video is important to me because that Matthew McConaughey message, that video there was recorded and created sometime somewhere else. And what it did and how it did for me was right place, right time, right moment to hear that in. And that's all I say why I continue to create in those in these terms, because it could take that one conversation or that one person's voice that just really penetrates and resonates with them. And it helps them take that first step in whatever they need to do in their own journey. So that motivates me. I'm Janet Ahmed host of Hacks and Hobbies podcast and a digital presence advisor at HumbleZone. This episode is brought to you by Home Studio Mastery. I launched a consultation and course program to help podcasters and course creators to create a space in their homes that will reduce the friction of creating content and appearing their best when showing up on camera. The pandemic gave us a lot of issues, but this one is here to stay. We're now so much closer to our audience thanks to video becoming more popular and affordable. I help guide folks who want to create Hollywood worthy studios to not only capture great content, but also build more confidence, more authority, and be more comfortable in front of the camera. If I can do it, you can too. And with my help, you can do it faster. So if you'd like to learn more, visit homestudiomastery.com and how you too can create a home studio that brings out your personality, professionalism, and possibilities. Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. We're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life. We want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. In this captivating episode, join us as we explore the incredible impact of storytelling with our guest, Gabriel Leal. From finding hope in dark times to embracing challenges and embracing personal growth, we delve into the power of sharing our stories. Discover how a single video changed Gab's perspective, leading them to embark on a journey of self-discovery and content creation. Tune in for a dose of inspiration and insights on how to transform your own life through storytelling. This is going to be an amazing conversation. Thank you so much for making time for us, man. Absolutely. Hey, anytime. Part of the reason why I, I do these things and continue to do them is their, their passion for me. Being able to take the opportunity to share my story or even help highlight somebody else's. I'm all about taking the time and investing in doing that because it it feeds man it, it nourishes other people sometimes and that's what this is all about and, and what yeah, we man. get to create as content creators yeah gabe let's take a walk through memory lane and rediscover your origin story i know you know your origin story but folks here might not and i can use a refresher so gabe let's absolutely let's walk let's down start it let's start it from the top you can pick any area that you want to go into but we want we want a story time okay so i'm going to start out a little differently and i've learned this lately but for me it was whenever you go back and look at pinpoints in your life and things that are like life-changing moments it was a dark room sitting down mindset in a very dark place feeling lost timid depressed and without any kind of idea of what my life as an individual held any kind of value. And it was in that moment and just sitting there alone in my dark room there with my head down and just asking for anything, a sign, guidance, anything that would help me change and shift what I was supposed to be doing in life. Mm -hmm. And it was a video from a friend that just showed up. This is why video is important to me. Yeah. Um, 
it was a video from Matthew McConaughey and she just simply sent an emoji and said, I think you need to hear this. And the moment that I pressed play on my phone, my life changed. Wow. Everything after that, I think in that moment, what I had been seeking, mm. I was so in that time open and unwilling to put up any kind of fight that everything just simply soaked into my soul. Yeah. And it changed the way that I looked at my own life and what I needed to go do. So from that moment on back in 2019 is when this happened. I knew that I was never going to be that same individual ever again. Mm -hmm. And what happened after that is that I remember after I got done just weeping because it was like everything that I had been asking for showed up. I dried my tears, set up, got out a pen and paper and just start writing things down that I needed mm -hmm. to change in my life. And that kind of led me down the path of going to seek whatever that was for me. It wasn't even a clear and present idea, but it was just enough of a glimpse of hope to get me motivated enough to be moving. So it was for me, when I sat down, I wrote down one word and it was challenge. I was going to challenge myself to do all of these things that I never had the courage or strength to want to go do. I started doing things that were totally out of the norm for me. And it's funny that I'm going through something like this now, but this is what the genesis was for me to get mm -hmm. the, this moving. And the first thing that I ever did was to start creating video, which I did on LinkedIn of all places. There were other social media platforms. I had started writing blogs yeah. and started doing stuff, but like why on a business centric networking platform would you go mm -hmm. there? I think it was because I was going there to seek change. Like yeah. people go there to seek change for their employment. And I said, you know what? I wanted to change that for me. And what it was is I discovered that there was more to it than just that. And I started by networking, first of all, with people with the intention of saying, well, maybe this will help me find uh, a change and shift in career. But then it changed my mind, my mindset had, and, sh and I shifted gears from there to go. There are a lot of really open people here that are more than willing to uh, allow somebody like me, who's just here to seek at this point, not even be active, but seek yeah, to share. And it was those conversations that I started having, having initially that somebody told me, you need to share your story, Gabe. You need to yes. do this. You need to start putting yourself out there. and this gentleman by the name, I'm going to share his name. His name was Steve Sullivan. It was the first one that really pushed me to go do this. He's what you talk about, what you write. He goes, you need to go out there and share your story and you need to do it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I mm -hmm. challenge, looked at that word challenge. So when I started creating video and putting on the on LinkedIn, uh, I literally recorded like a, a 15 minute video. Mm -hmm. And I had wrote down everything that I wanted to write, everything. I was like, I had it planned. I was like, this is great. I'm going to record it. I'm just going to do this. I'm doing it. And yeah. I recorded it. And it was like, ended up being like 17 minutes long. And yeah. then I tried to upload it on LinkedIn. And they were like, you can only do 10 minutes. That's the <laughs> most you can write. <laughs> That's right. So I had to go back and strategize it and learn to shrink it down. But even then, I shrunk it down to 10 minutes. Yeah. And upload it and didn't know that probably people weren't going to watch the whole 10 minute clip, but <laughs> the people were watched enough that they started reaching out. And yeah. from there, I started learning to do this on a more frequent basis. And then one day there was another gentleman that I was watching while I was creating videos and uploading them named Russ Johns. And I mm -hmm. saw him doing live streaming. Now, I'd seen live streaming before, but I'd never seen it done like this where they were doing this in interviews and everything else. And I was like, yeah, this is fascinating i loved who i was talking what he who he's talking to out of curiosity and not even knowing who he was or what he was about or anything just reached out and said hey i'm interested in what you're doing would you have a few moments if i just asked you a few questions and it 
He's absolutely. And it ended up turning into a two and a half hour conversation that like really inspired me to say, you know what, this is the next step for me. And it just had, it was lucky that I I was able to do this because I said, you know what, my initial intention was, you know what, I'm going to push myself really hard to go do this and talk on public stages. Mm -hmm. That is the next thing I wanted to really push for. Yeah. But I I felt like I needed practice. So live streaming was going to be practice in wanting to do this. Once I took that step into doing all this and did my own research, I launched my own show in, in late 2019. It was hard. <laughs> Trust me, it wasn't the easiest thing for me to figure out. But no. I did it. When I go back and watch, I did do enough research to create an intro and have a guest. But my guest pulled out on me the first time that I was going to do this. So I was left doing my own show solo. But again, that word challenge kept popping in my head because I said, you know what? I could have put it off and said, I'll no, do another time. Yeah. yeah, I'll do another time. Or when. So I went ahead and did it. And I continued to do that until the next day when I had another guest and it just started rolling moving forward. And at that point I wanted to start reaching out to other people and started interviewing them. But a lot of the times in that early, in those early stages, again, I was an unknown commodity. People didn't know. And I was getting a lot of, and the world was still open. Mm -hmm. People were like my busy schedule. I can't do it. Whatever. Fine. Great. I reached out to who I could, the people that would come on and that's the conversations that I had. And you know what? It was a lot of friends and family and people that I knew starting out with. Yeah. That's where you start, right? You go to the people who already know you. I'm like, Oh, you want to try something new? (laughs) Yes, sure. Let's do it. (laughs) And it was, but luckily you do have there. That's one great thing I learned is you do have interesting friends and family sometimes that, that do different things. So that was eye opening a little bit. And then course march happens of 2020 and the world Mm -hmm. shuts down and everything that is what changed the landscape for me and everything else because at that point i already knew i was not going to go do public speaking i wasn't going to do any of that because there was no way so all my focus went into doing what actually turned out to be a really big talent and a gift for me that i didn't even know that i possessed yeah and i got into doing live streaming and started going out and creating content every day and started doing it because I felt like every day I was learning something new every day I was getting fed and and nourished to to other people's experiences and their stories and having these really deepened conversations that it really impacted me and it not only helped my own growth but it expedited it tenfold faster than I would have if I hadn't done this yeah so it really pushed me into a whole strat, a different strat, a stratosphere of growing as an individual and learning because then I changed my mindset of everything because then if I was going to have guests on, I, I got into the mindset of I need to research them. I wanted to learn about them. And I, and thing is when you start doing those things and going down rabbit holes and finding people that are interesting and learning more about things, you're like, wow, this is a fascinating subject of what they're talking about or what they do yeah. every day. And it just always kept me filled with new ideas and new thoughts and new inspirations and motivation to keep doing these things that started in that started my whole journey of becoming an interviewer, becoming an entertainer, becoming a content creator that like pushed me into a whole nother level. And it took off. People started watching people started following along. People found what I was doing interesting. And they also they started showing up for me sometimes. And that was like really the great thing is I'm going solo tonight. I don't have anybody on when I would figure like, nah, eh, things are going to drop off because I don't have a really great cast or something. Turns out that's not the case. They come for me. They come for you. Recently, a friend of mine mentioned that, or I, I was mentioning, Hey, hey I'm going to do a solo podcast episode because marking a milestone, by the way, you are episode number two in season number five. <laughs> oh, I don't usually keep track, off. but we're in season five. You're episode five or two. So I was telling my friend, like, hey, I'm going to do a solo episode for episode 500. And she says, if you do more of those, I'll go listen to every single one of them. I was like, really? That's fascinating wow. because... 
we think that nobody's coming to listen to us. They're just coming for the guests. But no, they people come to listen to us because we put in the time and energy and effort to create something, create a platform to share the voices. And, and literally, that's what we're doing. What we're sharing, we're letting other people share on our platform their journeys, their stories, and, and what they've learned over the past, over their time and experience. Yeah. And that's the thing about it is we always feel like we're there to serve others and build these other and build these communities that people come and actively be a part of. Yeah. But you start learning when you allow yourself to, you start learning that they're also there for you. If there's a reason why I want to show up and listen to Janae talk or why he, when I, he shares something, I want to go be there. Yeah. So there's so much more to it. People. Yes. And that's Man. huge. So before, prior to you stepping into LinkedIn world, creating video content and thinking of this is what you want to do, what were you doing? What pulled you or what pushed you into this world? So part of it was I've always been a creative at heart. Like even in my early journey, me and my brother for a while, we were, we were aspiring script writers because we wanted to create. We loved the movies. We loved all the things that were, that went into the process of creating a movie. Yeah. So we wanted to become script writers so we could share our ideas. You sit down, you talk about it, but then, okay, hey, I have a great idea for this. And it, yeah. you would think about it, but then we put it in action and we started to go learn the process of what it was to become a script writer. Times were different then. Mm -hmm. uh, the internet was not as readily accessible. So not the as way prolific. That, yeah. And so the ways that we had to go about submitting scripts or like even doing these things, it was like it's, it's snail mail. Yeah. And it was hard to try to do that. We gave it a good shot. We tried, we even locally to do a few things, which we did, but none of it really panned out because we were at that point also maturing in our personal lives. So it's, you start, you know, want to create a family, you want to start having a family, you want to start doing things. So the mind should have your mind shift has to shift. And you go into a whole different idea. Walked away from that. And at times I still catch myself, like I still had caught myself at times, like wanting to continue to be creative though. But what's my outlet? Yeah, I didn't know what that fine. outlet was. Yeah. So for a long time, it was just me like writing my own thoughts down and journaling and stuff. Cause that was the only way that had an outlet to get some of these ideas and stuff out from inside myself. And then I started, once I realized what blogging was, I started writing blogs and started doing that on social yeah. media. And that's what still kept that creative fire wanting to go. And then, like I said, though, I did, I still didn't have fulfillment and I didn't still have what my purpose was. And yeah. That's why I like, was still like struggling with that because I wanted to, again, when you're creative and you feel like you, you need an outlet to put something out there into the world and you don't have that instrument, Yeah, you can be creating all the beautiful music you want in here, but if you have no way or no conduit to get it out there, it's, sure, it, yeah. Yeah, it's hard. That's so hard. when I found out what video was and doing this was, like that was light bulb moment of this is it. This is how you get to do it, Gabe. Mm -hmm. And like I said, once I felt enough confidence in myself to, to continue to do these things, like I, I knew, like it, I knew it was like, this is it for me. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love that. And as you're motivated to, and you know, inspired by, by watching others and, and asking them, Hey, can I pick your brain? How'd you do this? And the beautiful part, and, and you probably are this way too. If somebody came up to you right now and said, Gabe, how did you get started? I want to learn we give our time up dude mm -hmm. jump on the call right now i want to tell you everything because we as creators the kind of we are givers we want others to prosper we want others to really grow and when somebody comes and asks you how do i do this it's because they want to grow personally it's their yeah. personal development journey that you're jumping on yeah Absolutely.
And you're, that's for me, it's part of it because I'm not here if somebody doesn't do it for me. Yeah. Like I, if Russ says no, mm -hmm. like I don't have time. Yeah. Like I'm like, okay. And that door never opens. Yeah. Never opens. And I never see what that is. And that's again, hard to think about, but it did open. Yeah. And those things did come my way. And I yeah. want to be able to pass that along for somebody else, man. And and when somebody's that like thrilled and interested, absolutely. Let's talk. I think another thing that comes up is let's say Gabe, let's said, let's say Russ said no, I'm not I'm busy. I'm a little busy right now. Let's reconnect. As somebody who we are, we're gonna go find somebody else. Because <laughs> We got to answer that curiosity in our mind. We got to answer that question in our mind. So it is in human nature to find a way, one way or another. Yes. So what that says is that number one, you got to find, you got to make time for others. Number two, you might miss out in making a really great relationship with somebody too. <sighs> yes. Like that is a byproduct. Mm -hmm. like that those things that that happen like that if you if you don't allow it like those are things you you never know you could be meeting your best friend yeah you don't and know what those are it is so true you could be making your best friend and i've made some really good friends just through podcasting just through yeah. meeting through live stream i'm like oh my god i want to hang out with this guy more and more and you build up that rapport, you build up the relationship, and guess what starts happening? More and more doors start opening. Yeah. Because you are persistent and success shows up everywhere. Now, in the beginning, it's going to suck a little. And I mentioned this on a different podcast, different episode, how the first three letters, first four letters in the word success is. Suck. <laughs> wow, what a coincidence. Right? You gotta right. get through this suck. You gotta get through a suck. You gotta get through the suck to get to success. Yes, you do. And if you give up on that suck, guess what? You're not gonna get that success. 100 percent You gotta keep going through, man. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing about it. You that's gonna be part of what we're gonna talk about in the three hacks. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. That, that, that's for me. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. All right. What kept you motivated to keep coming back and sharing your story and creating these episodes and creating the shows? What, the, was, what, were, what were some of those things? I think one of the biggest ones was when I would have people reach out to me and write really heartfelt emotional messages mm. thank you for sharing that like for having that person on here to talk about this yeah because i was not a brave enough to share my own but it's given me hope and a little bit of inspiration that i can like those sort of things man you want to talk about ways to just feel you and understand why what you do is so important that is it for me. It's impact. So all the stuff that I've ever done and created in this world, if tomorrow I'm no longer here, there's still a blueprint and a map of who I am and oh, all yeah. the things that I've done. You've left that, a legacy. See that Yes, that will carry on and somebody might watch it one day yeah. and it'll be the right time and right. That's why I said this is why video is important to me because that Matthew McConaughey message that mm -hmm. video there was recorded and created sometime somewhere else. Yeah. And what it did and how it did for me was right place, right time, right moment to hear that in. And that's all I say why I continue to create in those in these terms, because it could take that one conversation or that one person's voice that just really penetrates and resonates with them. Yeah. And it helps them take that first step and whatever they need to do in their own journey. So that motivates that. me. That's that is really powerful, man. This has been so much fun learning about you, learning from you. 
and you sharing your journey on, on what kept you going, inspired you, and brought you to this journey. And it's not the destination ever. It's the journey. So thank you for sharing. We're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, Gabe's going to share three hacks to share. Three hacks. Three hacks. To take. <laughs> yeah. three hacks. Yes. Three hacks. We we'll got it. That. I'm Janet Ahmed, host of Hacks and Hobbies podcast and a digital presence advisor at HumbleZone. This episode is brought to you by Home Studio Mastery. I launched a consultation and course program to help podcasters and course creators to create a space in their homes that will reduce the friction of creating content and appearing their best when showing up on camera. The pandemic gave us a lot of issues, but this one is here to stay. We're now so much closer to our audience thanks to video becoming more popular and affordable. I help guide folks who want to create Hollywood-worthy studios to not only capture great content, but also build more confidence, more authority, and be more comfortable in front of the camera. If I can do it, you can too. And with my help, you can do it faster. So if you'd like to learn more, visit homestudiomastery.com and how you too can create a home studio that brings out your personality, professionalism, and possibilities. Welcome back, guys. We've been talking with Gabe Leo, Stream Tornado, superhuman over here. <laughs> He's shared his life story, and there's a lot more there, I'm sure. He shortened it for us to talk about how he got into streaming, how he got into creating an amazing show, the unfiltered live show. Yes. And that helps entertain, educate, and connect through conversations and interactions. Dude, you've got a few hacks for us to share. So let's have at it. Yes. So one of the ones that I've always harped on and I tell people is always to stay focused on your both short-term and long-term goals. Like having something like that defined, and I tell people like this, you wouldn't just get in a car and drive and f hope to get to your destination. Like you need a roadmap. That's what these, that's what those goals are for you. 100%. So you know exactly what it is you need to do. And here's the thing, you can always change direction of what those are but at least you know where you're headed. And that's the point of like, why I tell people to stay focused on what that is for you. And when people, when they talk to me about their own like stories and when they share things with me, the struggles that they've gone through, hmm. this is like one of the glaring things that usually stands out. And these are just, these are just recollections of hundreds of stories that I've heard that still stand true doesn't matter it could be a hundred years from now and these are the things so that's the first one for me is just stay focused on what that is keep that in mind because when we lose focus on that we head off path we go different places things become blurry and you know what it, it does happen but that's what i that's the one hack is whatever that is write it down mm -hmm. read it every day always again keep that top of mind what that is for you and those things will start, they will actually start becoming reality. But it it takes the long term, again, the long term goal for me was speaking in public. It took me close to three years to getting there, but yeah. I got there and that was it. So stay focused on it. Number is the number one fact, the number one hack I tell people. Number two, stay consistent. If people ask me, what's my secret? What's the secret sauce to what you do and how you do it and why people show up here all it's because I'm consistent. They know that I'm going to be there yeah. because staying consistent with it does a few things. It builds trust. Number one, that people again will be, know that you're reliable and then the results will start showing up and you being consistent with your resolve and what you do. Here you are season five, episode two, but people know that. And people, again, trust that people are like, 
I, I, I want to go listen to DJ because I know what I'm going to get. Same mm -hmm. thing with me. That's what it is for me. So if you stay consistent, fun things and magic things start happening around. There's a saying that luck favors the prepared. It's because those people are consistent with what they do. Yeah. So when people want to know what that is, this, this is it. This is the secret. And it's not really a secret. But that's the secret. If you want to know what it is, it's the consistency. Okay. Yes. And then the last one that is my own thing that I've developed, and I call it always go back and hit the R's. What are the R's? The Re's, I say, because all these things are important. Because just like with the first two that I shared, these things also go and work well with all of them. So I always talk about regroup, reevaluate recalibrate and respond. These are all important because even if you stay focused on your goals, but you, something goes, changes in your life and adjustment. Okay. Well, reevaluate it. Yeah. You can regroup, recalibrate your journey. And then you respond by going out there and putting action into it. So like those things are what I tell people to do. And it, you take inventory when you do these things. Like you, like people, yes. like New Year's, you're like when people say, I'm going to do it, my whole, I got my whole plan, my year planned out, my calendar done, all this stuff already created. And if you're missing a few things in there, and what is that? Like you can plan, great, you have it planned out. There are variables that are going to show up in your life. Yeah. That you're going to have to do one of these things. You're either going to have to regroup, reevaluate it, recalibrate what you're doing, or you're going to have to respond to it. So. That's why I say keep, they'll always be able to do that because again, it gives you the, not only the physical inventory of your, in your life, but the mental and the spiritual and everything else that goes along with it. Yeah. So like I tell people when they ask me like what that is for me, I say like, that's why I've constantly said after a certain amount of time, I stop doing what I'm doing and I go back and I do these things. Like after I'm done with the season here, I'm doing my hundredth episode at the end of the year. Nice. I'm going to regroup and then I'll reevaluate everything. Then I'll look back and recalibrate what I want to do. If it's going back to doing an everyday thing or if it's a bye week whatever that is, and I'll respond and go put action into it. Those are things that you can, that people can do every day that doesn't cost you a penny. Yeah. It doesn't cost you nothing except time. Except time. And we all have time. We just Depends on how you, we, we yeah, we got, value. we can get so much time back if we cut out some of the things that we do. <laughs> I'm not going to mention what? anything because you already know what that is. <laughs> I know what that is, but yes, you're right. But yeah, that's, you know, and those things like people are like, how do you do all of this? It's because I follow these things that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. how I find the time to do all these things. Because if I value time, and then all of these things are tools to help me find it and build it and manage it and be able to do the things that I want to do yeah. with it. So that's my three hacks, man. I love it. Thank you so much, Gabe. Those were totally awesome. I, I like to reevaluate, right? So we didn't know what it was what it was going to be like again after having child number four. <laughs> Same here. Like, oh, it's oh snap. Okay, gotta reevaluate what how we spend our days. Gotta reevaluate all the things that we do, plans that we had. Oh, we're gonna have this vacation plan. We're gonna go to Disney. That's not happening. You gotta reevaluate you your life, and, and that's you gotta do this all over again. Karen, Mark. <laughs> Tear it up. Go all over next again. year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's those it's are... crazy. It's crazy times. So thank you so much for sharing those hacks. I love them. Absolutely. Anytime. R let's jump into our Ooh. flash round. Our flash round. I've been waiting for this. I'm still coming up with a name for it. Some someone you mentioned could be a fast track, it could be flash round, but it's gonna have a different name till we have it figured out. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> Probably in season five. Come on. Yeah. Only. <laughs> oh what is so number one? What is the one hobby that you wish you got into? Now I thought about this and it's changed a few times, but 
for me, I always said, I, I wish I would have got into painting mm -hmm. because it seems when I talk to people or I see other artists or ever, other individuals who are like really deeply ingrained in what they do when they paint, it seems so yeah. refreshing and relaxing because I think it is for them. It's for, yeah. It's a conduit to express themselves and it also releases things for them. If that is the one thing that I wish I would have spent time getting into, it probably would have been that. Now I, I probably could now, but but if I, I it's like anything, if I would have been doing it for a long time, I would have actually known like what that value was in my life yeah. and could lead you down in, in, in another rabbit hole of things you want to change in your life. But if there yeah. was one, that's probably would have been one of it is to take up painting. I wish I would have like done that. it. Yeah. No, painting. It's so soothing. I've got a couple of coloring books that I haven't started coloring in. I even got a set of coloring pen pencils. Yeah. I just haven't started yet because I know it's soothing. I know I know, I know it's gonna be good, but I know I will talk fine eventually, to, 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 to <laughs> right? Yeah. <sighs> All right, next question. What did you want to be when you were a child? I remember this one. So I wanted to be a police officer and I thought it was because number one, people always, when there was trouble, it was to rely on the police. You felt like there was something, there was something about being a police officer. Yeah. It was noble. So I wanted to be a, a police officer when I was younger until I found out that they get shot at <laughs> and all the other stuff. But Ouch. yeah. Yep. But, but that's part of it. That's the, that's the part of what it is that they do is that and why people put them in such high regard because yeah, there's that risk. You know, yeah. That, that goes along with it. And it's the valor that they have to go out there and do that day in and day out. And it's nothing guaranteed that you're going to come home every single yeah. day. So that's quite noble. So that's what it was when I was younger until I realized it. And I said, too much of a chicken. To do <laughs> Just being honest. Nice. Our next question. What is your favorite movie or TV show? Okay. So this one I loved as well. And I've always go back to this one. But one of my favorite movies was the Shawshank Redemption. It mm -hmm. was written by Stephen King and it starred Morgan Freeman and Timothy Robbins. But it was... This it the whole story of how he ended up in in prison, even though he was going through a str the struggle of life at that point. When you learn as the story goes along that he was an innocent man living this life because of again external factors that he had no control over, mm -hmm. and how he lived in that life and continued to live with hope despite every single thing that was probably put against him. Yeah. That kept him going. Like when people who were talking in the movie, they talk about like being institutionalized. Isn't that what you have? He's no. He's, I continue to hold on to hope. You're never getting out of here. You don't know that, but it was just for him holding on to that and b being patient until it was the right time for him. Yeah. And he ends up escaping from prison. And at the end of the story, injustice is served and the people who are the bad people in the movie get what they deserve or what happens to them. I don't know if they deserve, but still, yeah. but he walks away from it all because he did this and he held on to it. And it was the thing that kept him, it was almost like his candle in the darkness just mm -hmm. kept that one light on and it was enough. So yes. that's why it was such a, uh, it's a powerful movie and why I always, anytime it comes on or anything, I'll, I'll watch it. Nice. Next question. What movie would you choose if you got to play a character in it? Oh, so if I wanted to be a character and, it, and I know it would be because I'm, I'm a superhero guy, but I wish I could be Iron Man. And I know we're going to talk about superheroes in a minute, but if there, yeah. I could, if I could step into a role, I just liked who he was because he was brash. He was bold. He was all, he, he was almost like it from the very beginning, an anti-hero. I'm not a hero, but I am a hero. Yeah. And it 
it's like my, my own journey. He stepped into it by accident. It wasn't something that he was planning on ever doing. It wasn't anything yeah. along those lines, but it was what he became. And at the end of the whole thing, he's the one that saves the world. Man. So the next question, and and what's cool is I've been re-watching this movie. I just watched Iron Man 1 two days ago, and I watched Iron Man 2 yesterday. And I picked up a lot of things that I didn't in the beginning, right, the first yeah. time around. So there's so much in there. I'm like, wow, this is so cool. It the is. script writers did such an amazing job. And when you were sharing that you loved creating scripts, I was in the same boat. I was like, hey... I want to shoot movies. I want to do documentaries, but we need scripts. So then I went and took some meetups <laughs> around script writing. And these people had written so many scripts and novels and stories and whatnot. I was like, wow, this is a lot of work. It is. <laughs> so much quite work. a bit. It is. But yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. All right. So next up to the question, who is your favorite superhero? Now... <laughs> I was torn between two because I know, I know, and I'm gonna always go back to him because he was the original for me. But Batman was the guy for me, yeah, because he fought injustice in his own way, in his own style, and he did it most of the times in the shadows without mm -hmm. all the praise and everything else that goes along with it. And you actually got what people actually felt about him. People felt he was evil he was a vigilante yeah. that he was all these other things and then people saw him as the the hero behind everything and wanting to do good and bring crime and injustice to a halt just again it's funny that both these guys that i'm talking about are both billionaires <laughs> but, the, but again superpower they have every reason not to do it yeah. You don't need money. You got all of this in place. You don't, mm -hmm. but it's, it's the other part behind it. The story, the journey, the passion and the fulfillment of doing it. Yeah. And that's what like really resonates with me. Why I like both those characters. I love it. When I first moved out to the States, Batman was my favorite because we only knew Batman. We knew a little bit of Superman, but that was before my time. Yeah. Like in the 80s, Batman was popularized. And then finally in the middle of the 2000s is when, is when Iron Man came out. But even yeah. before that, there's been a lot of different superheroes. But they really did it for me as well. Mm. Especially Iron Man. This, his entire arc, his entire journey. I'm actually writing an article on, <laughs> writing a blog post on Iron Man, the second movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's going to be fun. Nice. All right. <laughs> next up. If, and this is the last question. If you were a board game, what would it be? Ooh, I've always liked this game. And whenever we played it, it's because it's based on things that you do. So for me, the game of life, mm. if you've ever played that board game, the not. It, it's interesting it's you make choices mm -hmm. like you pull cards it's a it's a board game but it, the whole thing is to be successful in life that's yeah. like the ultimate goal of the game and i think it, it opens up like how we it coincides with what we do every day <laughs> yeah. and it's we pick a card today and our card says hey we're not gonna have a good day today but we still got to do go out and live it. Right. Yeah. We, we're, we know how to deal with the cards that were dealt and do forward. So that's why yeah. I liked that game and why, um, again, it not totally, but it does mirror reality that we are, we, there are consequences to our choices. So oh, absolutely. If there's where, wherever there's action, there's a yeah. Reaction. <laughs> Absolutely. Flaws, right? There's that re again, right? That's why I tell people go to the re and see. Mm -hmm. Like those things will, they, they'll tell, they pretty much tell you like the where you. things are. I like it. I like it. I like it. Awesome, man. Where can the superpreneurs find you? Absolutely. So if you want to find me, the easiest, most direct path to find me, and I've mentioned it on here is LinkedIn. 
I hang out there every day, even weekends. So if you reach out to me and message me there on LinkedIn, you can find me at Gabe Leal on LinkedIn. That is probably my most accessible platform if you want to reach out to me. But of course, I am across every, just about every other social media. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter at the Stream Tornado. You can go yeah. look at there. I am on there as well. And like I say, you ever take the opportunity to reach out to me, do respond to all my messages. So if you ever want to learn about me or what I do, or ever even want to come broach the idea of, of coming on and having an interview with me, please do. Don't be afraid. I am an open book and I always love the opportunity to learn, expand, explore new conversations with people. Love it. Thank you so much, Gabe. This was a fun conversation. And as always, it's all, it's fun hanging out with you. Yes. Thank you again for your time. <laughs> we'll Absolutely, you. man. Thank you guys. Yeah. I do appreciate it. Wow. Love it. All right. Till the next episode, we'll catch you guys later. Have a good one. Bye everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode on Hacks and Hobbies. We absolutely appreciate your contribution. You can find additional notes on hacksandhobbies.com. Please share the podcast with your friends and tell them what you learned about our guest today.